Hello, and welcome back to the x -Plane Scenery Development video series here on YouTube. In our last two videos, we took a model from SketchUp and we textured it, and then we placed it into the x -Plane world to see it in the simulator. Today, we'll go over night textures. That way we can add some ambiance to our airports during the evening hours. Since the last video, I've gone ahead and added a sign to our building that will be lit at night along with a couple of the offices. The texture for that sign has also been added to our image file here in Photoshop down in the bottom left corner. It's just a, a simple blue solid colored square. So let's go ahead and talk about how night textures work. Now x -Plane refers to night textures as lit textures, and that's what we'll refer to them as from this point forward. If you're using an image editor that allows layering and grouping, it's best to, instead of creating multiple different files, rather instead we'll just create a new group with some new layers on top of what we already have. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of our existing layers and put them into a group. We will call this default. Of course, you can name it whatever you want to. Now we'll go ahead and create a new group and we will call this lit. The very first thing that we have to do at this point is decide which of these textures will show up in the lit texture, so which ones have some light showing through at night and which ones don't. Now, obviously, we're not going to have lit bitumen that's on the roof. It doesn't make any sense, so we can just ignore that part of the texture completely, and we'll just focus instead on the solid blue color for the sign as well as the walls that are made up of glass. There's a couple ways of doing this, and those who are more adept at things like Photoshop or whatever editor is you're using might go through and use layer masks and things like that. But in order to keep it simple, all we're going to do is we are going to copy and paste our two layers that we have here that we want lit into our lit folder at the top. Now, what we also need to do is we need to create a new layer, which we will drag to the bottom and we will paint all black. Now what we're left with is just the two textures that we want to be lit. Now, the way that lit textures work is that anything that is visible in the lit texture will show through at night in the X-Plane world. It actually shows on top of our existing textures, although they're of course dimmed, and so we're simply adding light to our underlying texture. We'll go into that a little bit more and we'll kind of demonstrate what that looks like as we get further along in this video. So now we need to start thinking about how well lit each of these materials in the texture will be. The neon sign on the side of the building, for instance, will be 100% lit, so we will leave the layer opacity set to 100. However, the offices, the glass is going to diffuse the light coming out. So we want to lower the opacity of the layer to something that seems more natural. And as a starting point, you always tend to go darker than brighter. We don't want to leave this uh, you know, somewhere from 50 to 100. We should really start somewhere around the 30% range. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and change the layer opacity down to 30%. And this will be our starting point. Now, obviously at this time, all these different offices, all the windows for the offices are going to be lit uniformly. And that's not usually how office buildings look at night. Usually you'll just have one, maybe two of every 50 or so windows that are actually lit. So now we'll go ahead and go in and start bringing up or pulling down the brightness on all these different windows. Once again, in the interest of simplicity, instead of going through and creating layer masks, which might be a topic a bit more advanced than some of the people that are viewing this, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to, again, duplicate this layer with the glass. What we're left with is now a essentially 60% opacity layer of glass, but what we can do now is we can use our selection tool and go in and just pick out the couple of windows that we want to be fully lit, so we'll do that now. So I'm going to pick this window right here. And additionally, I'm going to pick this window down here. So we'll just go ahead and select these. And now what we'll do is we'll reverse our selection. So we'll select everything other than those two windows and we'll simply hit the delete key. And now we've deleted everything other than the two windows, which are now 60% bright and everything else is at that 30% opacity. We'll go and save this image now, and just to see what it looks like, we'll pull it into SketchUp and see what we get. So here we are back in SketchUp, and I've gone ahead and just temporarily pulled in that new lit file that we created. And you can see here that 
while it's obviously a bit too uniform, uh, we do have certain office windows are lit up, whereas the others are not. And we, of course, also do have the airport tech sign on the side of the building is 100% brightness, which is what we want. Now, let's go back into Photoshop and we'll talk about how we name the file that we're saving, how we organize that within our custom scenery package, and also how we make sure that the object is actually pulling in this lit texture. When we're done with that, we'll take a look at it and explain. Now that we're happy with the way that this looks, let's go ahead and save the file. And we'll again save it as a PNG. And what we're going to do is at the very end of the file name, ignoring the extension, we're going to add underscore LIT as in lit. And we're going to save, let Photoshop finish up. And if we go and we look in our custom scenery pack now, we should have our building.png as well as our building underscore lit.png. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to look at the text of the object file. So let's go ahead and open that up real fast. And you'll see a bunch of information in here. This is obviously all the coordinates of the different faces and points and things like that. But the part that we're interested in is right here at the top where it says texture is building.png. So that shows us that it's pulling in the texture that we created in the first episode. But the question now is how do we get to pull in our new lit texture as well for a night? There's a couple ways of doing that. The first is we can go in here and add it by hand. But fortunately, SketchUp to X-Plane, the plugin that we talked about earlier for exporting SketchUp objects into X-Plane, has some built-in functionality around this. When we use the export to explain functionality, it looks at the texture that we have currently included, which in this case is building.png, and it sees if there is a lit texture that matches, which would be building underscore lit.png. If it's there, it automatically adds that into the object file that is exported. So I'm going to go use SketchUp and re-export to explain, and then we'll re-examine the building.obj file and see what it looks like after that. Okay, so I've just done the export again, and as you can see now, our building.obj file has a new line, and it is this one just below our original texture, which is now texture underscore lit, and then it references the building underscore lit dot png. Again, you can go in and you can do this by hand if you want, but the SketchUp to Xplane plugin automatically adds this functionality for you. So let's take a quick look and see what this looks like in Xplane. So here we are in X-Plane, we're still in daylight, and as you can see, our texture is still working fine, the, the original texture that we used. But as we slowly reduce the light and go towards night, you'll see that the lit texture that we created and applied is starting to show through. It actually gradually fades in as the light fades out. And if we go to full night, you can see now there is our lit texture. Now at this point, you of course might want to go in and start tweaking some of this. For instance, uh, the offices that don't have the lights on are a little bit too bright, and perhaps the offices with lights on, we actually want to make a little bit brighter. But all you have to do, fortunately, is go into the layer opacity for those different layers and play with those a little bit and tweak the numbers. If you then save that lit texture again, you can quickly reload the scenery in X-Plane and see the changes. I hope this video helped you understand night textures in X-Plane a little bit. The simple rule is whatever is visible and how much it is visible in the lit texture is how it will show up in X-Plane. That does it for this video, but in the next one, we'll talk about the different surface attributes that we can apply to sections of our model. So for instance, if we have windows, we obviously want them to reflect. So we'll go into more detail about that. Until then, thanks for watching.